So you've listened to this far, I can say, sorry, it wasn't that, <laughs> it wasn't that great. But, well, it's not that it wasn't that great, but it's like, this was the thing during this time frame, it came up a lot where the Milwaukee FBI kept hearing about the Vernon Hills Country Club and the old homestead. And then, of course, somebody passed somebody, I assume from the FBI, passed this on to Robert Kennedy. So then it got like this big headline. Mm -hmm. It doesn't seem like the reality matched the publicity here. When they start looking into it, it's like, yeah, you got this Chicago guy who's kind of overseeing the gambling. Um, So it's definitely like, it's clearly a mob-related gambling operation. Like, no doubt about that. But it doesn't seem like it's that huge. Yeah. I mean, really, I think you only really mentioned two primary places, the Vernon Hills Club and then Yeah, there's, then there's, there's, old, there's old Homestead and there's and there's the Vernon Hills, and occasionally they would shift where they would hang out if they had to. Right. But it's pretty much those two places, and they were, as as I understand it, they were run by Leslie Cruz, but Leslie Cruz was pretty much never really there. It was like this Tommy Griffin guy who was on site. And yeah, and they would they would have like exchanges with Kenosha as far as like you send your gamblers here, we'll send our gamblers yeah, there. Saying. Not a huge link there. The Frank Bell Street link proves to be pretty much like if there is one, it's so weak. It's it's like right. it's such a terrible thing. This is one of those things where like the Milwaukee FBI is looking into all these things, like they keep hearing rumors, things keep popping up, and they don't pan out. And you know, and now it's like, as far as like episodes go, these are not like the most exciting episodes. But again, like it's important to point out how many things make it into these reports and how many hours of investigation they put into these things. And a lot of it turns out to be like rumors. And it's very hard to prove a lot of this stuff. Mm-hmm. And it's important to me to like say like, not all the stories are true. You know? <laughs> you know? I'm not, it's not my job to go out and be like, you know, Frank Pastore was a good guy. It's not my job, and I'm not going to say that. <laughs> but not every time his name was thrown out by the newspaper could they actually back that up. Right. So this time, like, when it was like, oh, he's sending the race wire services into Lake County, like, no, this is probably not accurate. Right. I, what I think is really interesting, well, one thing I want to add to you, you said, like, this doesn't seem like it was a very big thing. But if they did say mm-hmm. that, I mean, I, I know that it was just an in witness or whatever that yeah. said it. But if they were pulling down $30,000 a night at each one of these places, I'm thinking back in that time frame, that is a pretty significant oh, gambling yeah. ring. But That's like, a ridiculous you, amount of money. But I don't know where he comes up with that number. Right. Right. And like, but you did say that at some point in time that they went in and like raided someplace and they got like 2,500 bucks. But right. then again, are they constantly moving throughout the night? Are they constantly moving money out of the location just in case it does get raided? You never know. So they I could have been pulling down some serious cash. Right. So, and, and in 1960s money, even if they were pulling in 2,500 a day, that's not bad. No. I mean, it's not it's not millions of dollars, but it's not bad. No, it's not not bad, but at the same time, is it the amount of man hours and stuff that went into this investigation? Maybe a little over the top on it, right. I would think. But at the same time, this was again everybody's focus was on cracking down on gambling, so so it probably yeah. did was a very normal thing for them to do because everybody was just focusing on it. So yeah. So there's a few things more I'd love to like look into about this. Like I have not specifically looked into Tommy Griffin. I've looked into Leslie Cruz. I've gone through like all the Milwaukee FBI files that mention the clubs, of course, but I've never specifically looked into Tommy Griffin. And he seems like he's the one big link here that I didn't. I don't think I'm going to find anything extra that, that ties into the Milwaukee or Kenosha scene. I don't expect that. But I think it might add a few details here and there and did to the you, story. Did you say does Tommy is Tommy Griffin connected to the mafia in any way, or it, would his connection be that he worked for what was it, he Leslie wor- Cruz? He worked or, for Leslie Cruz. Yeah. So I don't know how you want to explain that, like if he was a mob guy or not. I I would suspect we would call him a mob associate. That a would be the term we'd use so- for him. 
because I, I'm guessing that he really didn't have any. He was dealings. just brought in because he knew how to run these types right. of businesses. Right. He probably just talked to Cruz and that was it. I don't think he went he to any it, mob right. hangouts or whatever. I don't know that, again, because I haven't really looked mm-hmm. into him. But he's not a name that's familiar to me. So I don't think he was around a whole lot besides just running these clubs. It's interesting. And I do love how they, they did do the pass back and forth between the states. Because I think, yeah. that, I think that's clever. And and why wouldn't you do that? I mean, you know, take the heat off of this area for a while. And yeah. It's kind of a cool thing. Yeah. And it, it's it's like, it's weird. I don't know how well people know the Wisconsin Illinois state line. I know you know a little bit, yeah. Yeah, um, it the cities and the and the bars that they, like they go right up to the line. Mm-hmm. So it's not like when you say, "Oh, I'm going to send people to Illinois," and Illinois is going to send people to Wisconsin. Like that's not as dramatic as that sounds. <laughs> oh, yeah, it could be like, like a ten minute drive up the road, right? <laughs> like Kenosha goes almost down to the border, and there's cities in Illinois that. Go right up to the border, and and you know, I know you know that well, there's a bar, right? Isn't it? Isn't Fritz's Tavern like literally? You step outside of Zion, and then you're in Wisconsin, and right there's Fritz's Tavern. Yeah. So <laughs> I don't remember the details of how it works, but it was something like like there was something like part of the bar is in one part, it in one state, and one part is in the other, and it was like to get around drinking laws <laughs> or something. Yeah, I don't remember the details, but like the point being is just like that's how close these places are mm-hmm. to the state lines. Right. If they're investigating stuff in Lake County, like Kenosha County is not far. Yeah, and when and when they're maybe bussing people back and forth, like a lot of people's head might go to, well, you get on a bus and drive an hour to get to Lake County's casino yeah. thing. Where it probably wasn't anywhere near that. It was probably they put you on a bus and you drove like down the block <laughs> or yeah, something and yeah, you were there. Yeah. Well, so like Waukegan's like the main city in Lake County and and Waukegan is not far from Kenosha. Yeah, so like, yeah, yeah. It's not a huge drive. Yeah. No. All right, cool. Well, do you got anything else you want to add to this episode or Not really. Um this was just we're at this point in the timeline, this came up and I know again, I know this isn't like the most exciting story, but it came up in the timeline and it's just like I want to get it out there. This story might mean something to somebody, like a posted on there, and somebody's like, "Oh yeah, yeah," and maybe it was some really old timers even remember this. Yeah, they might they might have been going gambling there. For yeah, all we know. So, so. this might mean something to somebody, but uh, but I know like the the, the Boga listeners are gonna be like, "I don't care about a couple of clubs and whatever," <laughs> but I'm I'm just going through the timeline. <laughs> Not everything's gonna be a banger, man. But, <laughs> uh, <laughs> Gavin, you are way too old to use the term banger. No, I'm not. No, I'm not. I love that term. But next time, next time I think will be better because this next time is going to be one of two things. And it depends. I'm waiting on, on a file to come back. If it comes back before next time, we'll probably do that one. And in which case, it's an actual death. There'll Ooh. be a, there'll be a death episode. <laughs> and if not, the next one lined up is. Another one of these, I know you like this, one of these like third generation family stories. Yeah, totally. Cool. All right. Well, then with that, we can wrap this episode up. We, again, thank everybody for tuning in. We will be back next week with a Patreon. So if you're not not on the Patreon, get over to patreon.com slash Milwaukee Mafia or just find it on MilwaukeeMafia.com. And as, well, Gavin, what what do you got for contact information for him? Oh, I don't know. Where no. where where do people contact? No, I mean really <laughs> just uh Milwaukee Mafia at gmail dot com uh is the best way. I just got an email this last week at my other email address. And you're like, how did anybody find that? Yeah, email I was surprised. Address? I was surprised they even <laughs> they even used that because it's so easy to find the Milwaukee Mafia one. <laughs> I mean, which is email me at the other one. I'll respond to that too, but. But MilwaukeeMafia at gmail.com <laughs> is the easiest way to reach me. Don't, don't go through the Facebook. Don't go through Twitter. If you, if it's even on Twitter, I don't and even do, know. Do you have a Twitter account? I don't know. <laughs> I'm just saying, like, none, don't go through any of the social media stuff. <laughs> Old school classic email <laughs> is your best way to, to get your message read and responded to. All right. Well, way to lay it down there for them. Yeah. So. But we will be back next week, and we thank everybody for tuning in. See you on the next one. Thank you.